Today on Globe News, way to stress less during finals, senior in earth fashion, lavender graduation, and President Huffleton's retirement celebration. Stay tuned. These and more stories, Globe News starts now. Welcome to Globe News. I'm Mina Rivera. And I'm Lilith Howard. This is our last episode of Globe News for the spring semester of 2024. We have packed in a lot of news and events around campus, so let's get started. Taking advantage of a summer semester abroad is a chance to see new sights, try new food, and experience adventures while earning credit hours. Nathan Reyes finds out more about this. The study abroad and domestic study programs are prepping up for their yearly semester trips during this summer season. Both programs are offered by the Engage Learning Office that provides students the opportunity to travel to various places in the world to study and experience different cultures and environments while providing curriculum to the students. So and the program each year, the programs we offer change, So we, but we have offered Japan, Costa Rica, Louisiana and India for many years, but they they will they do rotate. So when we may it may change next year in 2025, and they are each um, there's pre trip classes that happen before you travel. So there's like two to like ten pre trip classes where you learn the content and then you travel and then you learn experientially. So in a hands on way the content that you studied in the pre-trip courses. With the addition of the abroad and domestic trips, students are expected to be prepared within the months leading up to the trip with supplies and to have some knowledge of the language if necessary. So the resources that students need, students need everything that they would need to travel. So if you're traveling abroad, right, you need a passport, you need vaccinations, you need to be have some cultural awareness of the place that you're going to, you need um, support oftentimes from your family, your friends, you need financial support, you have to often, most of our students work, so you have to get time off. It's a lot of preparation. So for example, the, one of the students in our office is going to Japan uh, in this spring, and they have spent probably two years planning for it in terms of planning for the money, the time off, learning Japanese language so that they could travel to Japan. But not all of our programs are take that much preparation. For example, if you go to India, there's not language requirements, so you could go and plan just a couple of months ahead, but you still have to plan ahead because you do need passports, visas, Again, the ability to, to travel, get time off work, vaccinations, things of that nature. For more information on applying for the next study abroad and domestic study programs, and where the next locations will be held for next year's trips, visit slcc.edu slash study away. Before getting to a summer abroad, students have to finish spring semester. To help reach that finish line, students were offered a chance to try out some activities to relax during finals. The Center for Health Counseling recently hosted several stress relief events, all at SLCC campuses. They offer chair massages and therapy dogs to pet. We spoke with Mike Carlson, owner of Golden Hiller Service Dogs. So the benefits of therapy dogs is that it, dogs have a natural tendency to reduce our stress levels by increasing our oxytocin levels. And so most people, when they see dogs, get a really happy feeling um, just to see the dogs. And then to pet them, it's very calming and relaxing, and it reduces that stress. And so coming to events like this at Salt Lake Community College for the week before finals is really beneficial to the students because they're obviously it can be very stressful for those times. And so the dogs are here to help give some emotional support and just comfort to the students. Every semester, the Center for Health and Counseling holds this event during finals. Make sure you check the SLCC calendar to attend this event in the future. That was good information to keep in mind during finals week. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Next up, stories on senior fashion show and the success of SLC cross country.
Welcome back to Globe News. In this segment, we'll talk about the Senior Fashion Show and the Cross Country Team. The SLCC Fashion Institute hosted the annual Spring Fashion Show on April 20th at South City Campus. There are 10 students representing their designs to showcase their talent and personality. The designs were presented professionally with models on the catwalk. The support of nearly 500 attendees, including friends and family, helped encourage and inspire student designers at SLCC. There's, there's a couple of inspirations. I, I feel like my mother is an elegant woman, and so um, she passed away a couple of years ago. And so I have my, my wonderful aunt, her sisters, here to support me. And so I know that um, she's watching and they're watching. And yeah. And then I love the beach. And so and I love the bright colors and the ocean is so calming. And so that was a little bit of both for my inspiration. Inspiration is not only important in creating fashion, but can also be a key factor in helping athletes reach their goal. Logan Evans has more on SLCC's cross-country athletes. In 2022, Salt Lake Community College announced it would be introducing cross-country and track as an official sport at the college. Isaac Wood, who had previously coached at Florida State, Weber State, and BYU, was hired as a head coach. In just two years of being a sanctioned team at Salt Lake Community College, the team has risen to the top as one of the best junior colleges teams in the country and even brought the first ever women's national championship title to the college in 2023 when they won the NJCAA Cross Country Championships in Huntsville, Alabama. Since then, the men's team has recruited some top talent in the country and received a few transfers from Division I programs. Charlie Hardcastle transferred to Salt Lake at the beginning of 2024 and has improved more than he could have imagined at a two-year college. Going from a four-year to a two-year, it felt like I improved, like, and it is. This place is 1,000% better than where I was, and I think it's 1,000% better than 90% of other teams and schools out there. It's just, it's been so good for me. The creation of the cross-country and track teams at Salt Lake has created opportunities for so many athletes in the state and around the country to be able to chase their goals. Finn Ansbach, who transferred from Portland State, says that Slick has given him opportunities that he wouldn't have had otherwise. Since being here, I think it's really changed my outlook on running and just like kind of on life, like where I feel like I just kind of reset my goals. And then ultimately, I think it paid off a lot because, it, you know, I didn't, you know, I went to school for cheap. Like I didn't, like, I feel like I didn't waste a year academically. Like I'm getting my degree. Like I'm, you know, hopefully going to sign to a school that I wouldn't have been able to sign with otherwise. The team spends most of his time at the Jordan campus doing workouts on the road near the Institute building. Coach Wood says that he operates as if Slick is a Division I program, and he wants the athletes here to act like they are on the same level as other universities in the state. Coming up next, a celebration of Earth Day with the SLCC Fashion Institute and the Dream Center. What's on the agenda today? Well, I have a new client coming in. How about you? You've got something on the calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary's actually coming in. We're going to go over his house. Hey, Gary. Seventeenth of bacon, please. Kevin. Kevin, can you pass the bacon? Thank Welcome back to Globe News. I'm Mina Rivera. And I'm Lilith Howard. To celebrate Earth Day, the SLCC Fashion Institute hosted a trash -in show on Monday, April 22nd. Fashion students showed off recycled, upcycled, and refashioned looks they created on the catwalk. A clothing swap followed where guests could pick out free clothes to revamp their wardrobes. While helping the planet, the event also featured crafticism, which uses crafts to try and achieve political or social change. To learn more about the Fashion Institute and the Trash and Show, visit globeslcc.com. Students who are undocumented or are members of mixed status families have a resource available to them that they might not know about. Annika Riggle has the information. The Dream Center at Salt Lake Community College is a safe space for undocumented students and members of mixed status families. The center helps these individuals navigate college, graduate, and transfer schools. We talked with the Dream Center manager, Brenda Santoyo, to learn more about what they offer. So the Dream Center is a resource center for undocumented students, members of mixed status families, really anyone that has like a relation to the immigrant experience, and then um, 
immigration is so complex, so there's just a variety of statuses that would kind of fall under uh, the purview of the center. Um, but the resources we provide very much depend on like the student we're working with, the prospective student. So it could be helping them get started, applying for scholarships, um, building their network here at the college, um, and really finding other resources, not just in our center, but around the college and in the community. Mm -hmm. So they can access education, but not only access education, but persist and be able to complete their goals like everyone else. The center celebrated undocumented throughout April to bring together, help, and represent undocumented students. I got involved because I was needing need in to like financial assistance to cover my tuition for the whole school year and I reached out to the Dream Center to see what resources were available but they they said that there's a position open so I pretty much took it and and I've been helping students with their educational goals ever since. They have hosted multiple events including a pinata workshop and an immigration help site to help students meet with lawyers about their documentation cases. The reason that I actually got started with the Dream Center was I'm part of a mixed status family and I was really struggling to pay for college and there's the new positions that have opened up um, to being able to mentor others and just having that experience and knowing you know that there's a whole community of us and people like us who have the same struggles. Um, it was just really beautiful and empowering to be a part of and I've just really enjoyed it. So. The Dream Center will be hosting a final event for Undocument on April 30th, which will include a closing recession and celebration. To learn more and get connected with the Dream Center, you can visit their offices in person on the Taylorsville Redwood, South City, and West Valley campuses, or go to slcc.edu slash dreamcenter. Coming up next, the Lights On campaign helps drivers in need and an eco-friendly workshop for riders. Look at me, there is someone watching your footsteps. Welcome back to Globe News. I'm Mina Rivera. And I'm Lilith Howard. Reporter Malachi Acock went to West Jordan to find out about the Lights On campaign. West Jordan police are changing how they handle traffic stops. With the help of Lights On, instead of issuing tickets for problems like broken turn signals, they're offering vouchers instead. These vouchers help cover repair costs and open up conversation about financial difficulties that some drivers face. This initiative aims to build community trust and provide support where it's needed most. So. We have just started this program, so we haven't seen a lot of uh, the benefits yet from it. Um, so it's hard to say what we would want to change, um, but we really are looking forward to the change we, we do believe that this will bring anyway to the community. Chief Ken Wallington explains that the goal is to assist people who may struggle to afford media repairs. For example, someone might have to choose between fixing their car or paying for essentials like bills or educational materials. By providing a $250 voucher for local repairs, officers aim to ease financial burdens and to foster positive interactions with the community. I think that this will have a positive impact on both our community and on our police officers because the Lights On program gives our officers another opportunity. No, the Lights On program gives our officers uh, another option on how to enforce the law. Um, th However, the Lights On program affords our officers the option to be able to um, build you know, a more trusting relationship with members of the community by giving them the voucher or you know, just having a more positive interaction. So. Lights On hopes this initiative will expand beyond West Jordan and into more police departments across Utah and the rest of the U.S. They believe it can improve relationships between the community and law enforcement while providing much-needed support to those in need. 
On April 22nd, at the AAB Atrium on the Taylorsville Redwood Campus, the Students' Writing and Reading Center held an activity in celebration of Earth Day. Building upcycled journals and learning about a Japanese form of poetry called haiku, the SWRC teaches students the importance of taking care of the Earth and literature around the world. To build these journals, different elements were used, from cereal boxes to wood sticks, making the process more creative. To find out more activities like these, visit slcc.edu slash calendar. Next, we have stories about lavender graduation and piñata making workshops. Stay tuned. Globe News will be back soon. Welcome and thank you for joining us once again on Glum News. I'm still Mina Rivera. And I'm still Lilith Howard. Continue with this event that has taken place at SLCC in celebration Undocument Month 2024. Dave Stentlin has the story and pinatas of how the Undocument Month celebration teaches the community about this tradition. Okay, you have this. When you have your paper ready, as part of Undocument Month 2024, the Dream Center celebrates April 18th, the National Day of the Piñata, by showing students how to make a piñata shaped like a butterfly. Piñatas originated not in Mexico, but in China, where a huge cow was constructed, filled with seeds. Then it was broken up during their spring celebration. Marco Polo saw this colorful tradition and brought it back to Europe to celebrate the Primavera or the spring season. Clara Amazua, a local piñata maker, shares how the piñata changed after the Spanish brought the tradition to the Americas. The Aztec, they make these uh, clay pots with different colors. With, uh, they, they make this and put inside seeds, okay. jewelry, and different treasures. They make this with paper and colors, the four different colors for the different um, north, east, west, oh. yes. The original meaning of the seven-pointed piñata is steeped in religious symbolism. The clay pot represented Satan. The seven points of the piñata represented the seven deadly sins. The colors used on the piñata represented temptation. The participant was blindfolded to show that faith is blind. The piñata was hung in the air to show humanity looking to heaven for their reward. The stick represented virtue. The candy inside stood for the temptations of wealth. The fallen candy represented salvation or receiving forgiveness for one's sins. Modern piñatas have strayed from such heavy symbolism and have been replaced by fun, colorful donkeys and big sombreros being enjoyed by everyone in party settings. Seeds and treasure have been swapped out for a variety of candies. We do piñatas for everything, mm -hmm. every uh, celebration. Those attending the event were taught how to make a piñata. The piñata has transcended beyond just one culture. Anyone can enjoy the candy-filled colorful piñatas that now represent joy and happiness the world over. In other news, SLCC hosted the Lavender graduation to celebrate students belonging to the LGBTQ community who are graduating this year. 
SLCC's Gender and Sexual Sexuality Students Resource Center hosted the annual Lavender Graduation Ceremony on April 24th at the South City Campus. All SLC students graduating or not were invited to attend the event, enjoy food from the local Indian restaurants, play games, and celebrate the LGBTQ plus students who are graduating this semester. Peter Guzman, manager of the GSSRC, spoke about the importance of the event. Under graduation is telling our graduates like yes you can show up in full authenticity bring your whole self to this party um, so that we can recognize all of you where um, that's often not allowed in a lot of other spaces so um, I think that's why a big reason why um, these spaces are necessary. Don't be too afraid move forward with confidence and, and find your people find your community and um, Find the joy and your, your safe spaces to celebrate yourself in wholeness. When we continue, a metal sculpture class and the retirement of the president of SLCC. Keep watching. Globe News will be right back. Hey, camera one, you tell me. Welcome to Express. I'm Dustin Bobbell. It's officially spring, and with that comes a new season of softball here at SLCC. From sports to student life and leadership activities, that's already server A. Welcome back to Globe News. Metal sculpting isn't your typical fine arts class. Let's hear more about the class from SLCC student Charles Schau. This isn't your typical fine arts class. As the sparks fly in SLCC's basic metal sculpting class, students are demonstrating the creative side of welding. It's a really enjoyable class. It builds confidence within a student. It also allows a student to um, develop their own personal um, working relationship with their mind and their hands. Lawrence Wheeler is an instructor for this course, where students learn oxyacetylene and arc welding and how to apply them artistically. It's a good class for those who do not know anything about welding and want to learn. Students have been working all semester with torches, grinders, arc welders, plasma cutters, and other tools, learning how to use them to shape steel into works of art. While the first few projects are designed to help students learn the basics, Wheeler says that their final projects are of the student's own design. We don't uh, force projects on students. I'd rather have the student uh, pick something that they really want to make. Currently, the metal sculpting class is held at the West Point Center, sharing the welding lab with the Salt Lake Tech welding courses. However, with the Technical Arts Building's completion at the Redwood campus, this course will soon be available there as well. It'll isolate us more to our own sculpting and welding lab, uh, which is nice. This also means that more students will be able to fit this class into their schedules without having to travel as far between classes. Wheeler hopes this availability means more students take the course. He explains that the skills learned in this class, including artistic expression, are useful to students, no matter what career path they take. You're always going to have something you're going to have to draw from creatively, and uh, this class helps with that. Students who want to take basic metal sculpting should sign up for FA 1080. A retirement celebration honoring the tenure of Dr. Denise G. Huftelin, president of SLCC, was held at the Taylorsville Wedwood campus April 18th. SLC, 
Student Association President Joyce Wambui, the Tesha Wright Trustee of the College Honoring Hufflin, by presenting a building dedicated to of the Dr. Denise G. Hufflin Student Center. Hufflin spoke about how she has spent a lot of the great times in the Student Center and emphasized how the accomplishments of the last 10 years were done together by the SLCC community. Well, that's it for this episode of Globe News. To watch this episode and past episodes of Globe News, go to globeslcc.com or find us on Facebook at SLCC SMC or on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter or X at SLCC SMC. I'm Mina Rivera. And I'm Lilith Howard. Thanks for watching Globe News.